Greetings all you maniacs of minds with crimes. Welcome back to another Warframe Weapon Showcase. Today we are going to be talking about the Sigma and Octantis. Now this weapon, I doubt a lot of you have. I'm just going to put that out there. A lot of you probably don't have this weapon because you can only get it from logins. 500 day in login reward. Yeah. Um, you might be able to get it before that, but... Anyway, let's go over the build. Now, keep in mind that the builds I'm going to be showing you are catered towards high-level gameplay. Uh, enemies that take a long time to kill most of the time. Level 80s plus in arbitrations and sorties and things like that. So, here's the first build. Now, why did I go with gas? Well, first off, two form is all you need with this. Um, I'm using Final Harbinger. I don't really care about 11 Storm. I think it's okay as a stance, but honestly, I prefer uh, Final Harbinger. So, anyway, why did I go with gas? Well, to be honest, I think it works very, very well with this weapon, uh, Final Harbinger stance in particular, with Weeping Wounds and Condition Overload, to absolutely obliterate. Now, I have Gladiator Might here mostly for crits. Um, you could, in fact... Um, just, of course, put an organ shatter and you'll get slightly more critical damage. Uh, but, really, it, it's it's completely fine. So, this weapon has one unique thing about it. Well, two, really. First off, it comes with an organ catalyst and a free weapon slot. So, you don't need to panic. Uh, none of your weapons will be deleted once you pick this. Hopefully, you pick this. This thing is definitely better than the Zenistar now. The Zenistar used to be really, really good. Now, it's actual trash, unfortunately. Uh, I did like using the Zenistar with the Vara. It was really fun. Um, Y'all remember them days? That was fun as shit. Uh, so anyway, this thing uh, also has a unique aerial attack. Uh, so when you use this weapon and you, yeah, you can throw the shield. So if you press E when the shield is in mid air, it will come back faster or, and not go as far. Um, the shield throw itself doesn't do that much damage it can proc status but it appears that the shield might have a different status to, chance to it so first off let's go over the combo so the move forward combo is this very simple remember this is final harbinger um so the standstill combo is the best combo in my mind because this multi-hit flip and everything will lift enemies up into the air keep them in the gas cloud and condition overload has a fucking field day so the standstill block combo is sick dance moves. It looks way better when you're faster. And then the move forward block combo, yeah, you roll the shield, you do the spin, and then you do it again. And uh, that shield throw has a lot of range. And it, if you go in, if you have a really fast frame like Goss or Boosted by Volt or Valkyr, um, you will actually move really, really far with Final Harbinger. Uh, before the melee rework, I would almost say the Final Harbinger was a little bit too mobile and not focused. Now it's absolutely perfect. So I just got to say the unique aspect of this, like, like the unique look, I think it looks pretty sick. It looks pretty threatening, pretty almost, I almost want to say Daedric in a way, almost. I could totally see that kind of shield to be a Daedric shield. Um, so anyway, Crafted Heavy Gunners, level 135. You'll never see these dudes, but why, why the hell not? So I'm just going to do the standstill combo. So Weeping Wounds is going to guarantee status procs. And yeah. Now the only issue with the standstill combo is you'll sometimes fling enemies into oblivion. Um, but... And the move forward combo is really easy to keep uh, your combo up. Because you're moving so much and your shield is hitting... So look at this. Those bleed ticks and those gas ticks are enormous. And this thing does red crit pretty quick. Look at that. Anyway, I will switch over to a viral setup because viral, I feel, does work a little bit better with melee weapons. Uh, the gas, the gas status works very well on most enemies, I would say. The only enemies it will struggle against are enemies that really can't be affected by status, i.e. Kuva Guardians um, and something else I'm not remembering. But anyway, we'll move over to Viral. 
So, uh, Weeping Wounds, now at max max uh, combo, I don't think this hits 100%. I think it gets close. Uh, so if you don't have Weeping Wounds, that's completely fine. Put in more critical chance, put in more attack speed, put in more whatever. It really won't matter. So let's do it again. Yeah. Fire definitely is a lot stronger, but I do prefer the gas. Um, just for its AoE potential. And I'm really not going to talk about it, but the reason why I'm not using Prime Pressure Point is Condition Overload is just far, far stronger for this kind of thing. Uh, anyway, I really wish I could track the boosted status chance from Weeping Wounds, but I can't, which is really unfortunate. Uh, so let's quickly actually go over to Final Harbinger. Not Final Harbinger, uh, Eleven Storm. I personally don't really like 11 storm but i can understand why some people do so the standstill combo is is this pretty cool and then the move forward combo is a pretty just simple combo the standstill block combo you throw the shield you can actually control where the shield goes use the force and it does do good damage it is kind of really satisfying to just Hurl it at a crowd of enemies and knock everyone's head off. Uh, and then the stance uh, block combo, the move forward block combos, you fucking. Yeah, fucking Emperor Palpatine up in here. Anyway, let's show it off with the, the enemies. I don't. You see, the, the issue with it is. Is that it knocks the enemies around and it feels a little jut jutty or juttery. However, I it just doesn't feel right to me. But if you really love the stance, that's more power to you. You found the stance you really like to use with sword and, sword and board. Um, but me personally, I just like Final Harbinger better. The stance does do good damage, but it's not. It's not like. Yeah. I wouldn't mind another stance for Sword and Shield where it's more, I don't know, focused, I guess, but whatever. So, me personally, I just use Final Harbinger. Now, Final Harbinger, if I remember right, you get this from the arena. Um, I'm pretty sure that's where you get. Otherwise, it's not too pricey, I don't think. Uh, and Eleven Storm, I don't fucking know. Anyway, let's go ahead and go crazy. Let's give it to Valkyr first off. Now I'm choosing Valkyr because her two is gonna make this thing go really, really fast and that's bugged out. Why is it like that? And then uh, Eternal War is gonna be able to keep that up. So the enemies are going to get absolutely decimated really fast and also she has Steel Charge, which will give me some more melee damage. Not a whole lot, but it does, yeah. So you can, you can just sort of go crazy with this. Yeah, you can see how far you move with this amount of speed. And also, this is not the strongest Valkyr you can make. Um, this is just an Umbral Valkyr. Uh, I'd say any stronger and it becomes hard to use melee because she's moving so fast that your combos don't actually get inputted unless you have a macro, which is honestly a little bit of a problem, but it's okay. And the last thing I want to do is use it with Saren, because why the fuck not? Uh, because I know people use melee with Saren all the damn time, and I'm actually going to put on the gas build for this. Now, you can use Viral with Saren, but since Saren already can proc Viral, I don't really see the point. So, she procs Corrosive Toxin and Viral, so gas is actually a pretty good element to use with that. Anyway... So if you're curious about my Saren Prime, this is how she's built. Good strength, mu uh, a lot of range. Fuck efficiency. Um, so anyway, I'm going to have to spawn in some more enemies because 8 is not going to do justice. I wish I could just say spawn more in than, than, the, than what I've set instead of having to do this. 
honestly kind of annoying. So, I press my three, do this, and I start smacking. So everyone's infected, their armor's being stripped. And yeah, they, they don't stand a chance. Saren doesn't even have a steel charge on her, and I can proc viral. They have no armor anymore. They're, they're... Things are not going well for them. Saren is overpowered. But honestly, she's not overpowered. The enemies are underpowered, because there's really nothing to stop her. So anyway. Yeah, the, the Sigma and Octantis are... It's a very, very good weapon. It's extremely good. It's not like, you know, world-ending uh, power. I... I don't know if it's stronger than the Sylvanoc and uh, Aegis Prime. I kind of want to say it might as well be, but at the same time, I don't have that weapon yet. Uh, so I will do a direct comparison video if that damn weapon will actually fucking drop for me. Stupid ass RNG. But anyway, again... This build is geared towards enemies that don't die in one or two hits. I'm talking at least level 100s. This uh, build is designed for that. It's designed for that high level gameplay, which is what I do most of the time. You think I'm doing normal Star Trek missions? No, I'm doing arbitrations. I'm hunting liches. I'm doing uh, long fisher runs in disruption. I'm doing difficult content. Well, quote unquote, difficult. Uh, so, yeah. Everything on this build isn't too difficult to get your hands on. Condition overload can be an absolute fucking pain in the ass, but I think some people think it's still nerfed, which they are absolute, absolutely full of themselves. They don't know what they're talking about. Condition overload is still powerful, still stronger than prime pressure point by a long shot. So I'm pretty sure you get this thing for pretty cheap. Weeping wounds... I don't know. The Acolyte event just came around, so get it while you can. And same thing with Blood Rush. Blood Rush, you can actually farm yourself from uh, the Lua spy missions. But fuck Lua spy missions. And Prime Breach is only from Borrow. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this weapon showcase. I know I'm doing pretty generic weapon showcases. Uh, pretty cookie cutter builds and all that crap but I mean come on I, I honestly do enjoy doing this because I think it's pretty cool and uh, I think it's kind of interesting seeing how how every single individual builds their weapons because unless you're following the quote-unquote meta and not having fun with the game you can make some very interesting builds that are not only fun but also pretty powerful I don't think a lot of people would think to use gas plus weeping wounds on the on this sword and shield Although some people are like, wait a minute, you have a lot of slash there and gas procs everywhere, condition overload, of course it's going to be strong. But people are sort of just like, oh, corrosive, viral. That's the only two that exist. Um, and yet gas is honestly better for high level content than you might think. Because, well, it's AoE damage over time that ignores armor just like slash. <laughs> so that's pretty potent. Uh, anyway, so thank you guys so much for watching, and remember, in trouble, we trust.